Welcome back to 8701. So we continue our discussion or development of QED with a discussion of the photon. We have already seen how we can describe electrons and positrons, one electrons, and now it's time to actually look at the quantum of electromagnetism, of electromagnetic fields. A few general remarks first. Um, quantum electrodynamic is a quantum field theory, the quantum field theory of electrodynamic processes describing how light interacts with matter. Specifically, all processes where a photon is used um, as an exchange particle involving electrically charged particles can be described by QED. The photon itself is, the, is an elementary particle and it's the quantum of the electromagnetic field. Good. The real power in QED lies in the fact that we uh, can describe it as a perturbation theory. You will see that we can write down Feynman diagrams, calculate them, and use those calculations for um, to describe processes we can observe in experiments. And since we can do this with a very high precision, uh, we can use QED in order to make forecasts, in order to understand, in order to understand the inner dynamics of processes we can measure. Feynman called QED our pride and joy. And it's in the, in the really unmatched precision of the theory um, where the pride and joy lies. But stepping back one step, let's start with classical electrodynamics. And let's start from Maxwell equations. And I'm going to use this and just to, to make a few points and remarks. Um, this is really not in the direct path of our development, but it connects the dots to something you have already uh, studied, meaning classical electrodynamics. So you, you know, you all have seen Maxwell equations. They can be expressed in integral or differential form, and you can uh, write this even more compact than, than it's given here. So you see Gauss's law, where you see that uh, electric charges generate uh, electric fields. You can you see that you can uh, produce currents um, by time changing electric fields or by changing, spatially changing magnetic fields. Uh, Gauss's law uh, for magnetic fields saying that there is no magnetic charge, no magnetic monopole, at least as far as we know. We haven't observed those. And then there's Faraday's law as well. Um, you can express the magnetic field and the electric field through potentials, uh, vector potentials. Um, and if you go one step further, you see this very nice form using four vectors for the potential and the vector potential and the, the charge and the, the current. So we, what we are really doing here right now is we're just rewriting the very same equations. And so when we use this um, Dalabertian uh, operator, um, the form of this equation looks like this. You can already see this form is very similar to the to the um, uh, Klein-Gordon equation we just looked at. So let's, you know, go down this path a little bit more. So this here is yet another form to write the Maxwell equations, um, where F is our field strength tensor. And the field strength tensor has all the physics involved. You see that, you know, you're describing the electromagnetic field in, in, in its components and then the, the simplification of the Maxwell equations are sitting here. So we have the Maxwell equation in this form, we have the Maxwell equation in this form here. So there's one interesting thing when we, when we use uh, potential in order to describe electric, electromagnetic processes or um, uh, properties, is that we can actually choose the specifics of the gauge. There's a degree of freedom uh, which we can uh, choose, which doesn't have any impact on the physics, on the reality of the physics, right? And you can see this here. If you do this, if you do the choice at this component here, zero, um, this is called the Coulomb gauge. Um, we basically simplify again our Maxwell equations to this point here. Great. So um, there's a, a number of things to be said. So what we're basically doing here, if we fix a gauge, so if we fix our potential, we tie um, the choice of the potential to the frame, to the inertial frame we are using here. And you could say, ah, that's not nice. That doesn't seem Laurent invariant. It is actually okay to do this. The issue with that is that you, you tie, you know, if you go from one frame and the other, you have to actually 
change the, the, the gauge as you go along with changing the reference frame. But there's nothing bad, it's just a little bit awkward. All right, then moving back, so we have this equation now. And this equation obviously simplifies if there's no current or no charge around for free photons um, to this one. And for this, you can find the solution is again the free wave. So this was the goal of this lecture, finding the free wave. So you could have probably written this down before any of the discussion, but I just want to make the connection. So now this in the QED, this A nu becomes our vague function for the photon. Again, we have to, you know, this is as a result of the of the gauge we, we, we made. So we made a specific choice in our reference frame, and then we can we can describe the photon with our wave function here. There is this epsilon here. Epsilon is our polarization vector. Um, and A is a normalization factor. We always, always have to normalize our wave function to you know, a specific um, sets of units. All right, that's good. Um, we can now analyze this. We find uh, that those conditions are fulfilled here, uh, basically saying that you know, a photon behaves like a photon. The energy of the photon is equal to uh, the momentum times C. Um, that's great. But it's also not a surprise because the form of this equation here is exactly that of the Klein-Gordon equation with small for massless particles. And the Klein-Gordon equation we got from this very same relation. So it's not a surprise that this works out. All right, one more word on the polarization vector. Um, so the choice we just made, I'm rewriting the choice here, this is our Coulomb gauge, um, requires that the, the zeroth component of our polarization vector is is zero and that the polarization vector is orthogonal to the momentum vector. So in principle you have the three vector, the three vector is perpendicular to the direction of motion and that allows us to find two polarization states which are independent of each other. So different to our um, electrons before, now we don't have four states, we only have two states as independent solutions for a given, um, for a given momentum. All right, so with this now, we have electrons, we can describe those, we can describe photons. So the next step now is to look at uh, the Feynman rules, which allows us to describe the interaction between those two.